Hi, this is Mia. I'm, um, <clears throat> I had just do gone downstairs to get my warm cocoa in this nice cup, and I am trying to, these are the clothes I wear outside. This is, somebody gave this coat. Somebody at my old work, which I worked at like 2006, gave a bunch of clothes to my daughter, <laughs> and some of them she doesn't, she could put in her giveaway pile, because she's like, why are you wearing my coat? Like, I don't know, <laughs> it's like because all my coats are in the laundry and I felt stupid and it's really short in the sleeves and it's really cool and so they're really old. A lot of clothes we don't buy and if something gets to my daughter and my daughter doesn't wear it, then I wear it. If I can fit it on, even if, if it doesn't fasten, I wear it. So I was like, yeah, I should probably watch that. But yeah, I made a video just a minute ago and was really freaking out about all the stuff that had to be done. And I was thinking about what my friend said about renting this place. And now I'm like trying to, oh shoot, clean my house. It's 7, 10. There's a bunch of kids on my porch because they are attracted to my daughter's brain. Not like zombies, but like homework helper, and so she'll get in trouble for helping people with their homework, not doing her homework, and not helping her brother with their homework, with his homework. But right now we're supposed to have an inspection tomorrow, and I got the notice this morning, but I was um, trying to get some deadlines. I didn't even go to midwifery this morning, and I feel like I was like, dang it, I didn't do anything. All I did was put a bunch of clothes away, wash a couple loads of laundry, do a bunch of dishes, and so I'm like mad at my thing, like and taking my thing to a job interview, um, second interview, and I'm like, dude, this sucks, and I feel like, um, <clears throat> huh. I feel like there's midwifery tomorrow afternoon, and one of them is not midwifery, but I could go because I know the person. The other one is. I just feel like right now, make sure that I can pay our rent, and I'm letting all of this, like other stuff distract me and uh, I need to I need to now I also have this electric bill that I need to pay oh my gosh and I also have like my crafting business that I'm dealing I'm like every everything I told I said earlier earlier today housing the five things I was saying housing food and water clean food and water fresh water, housing, fresh water, clothing, so stay warm, not freeze, go out in public wearing something, transportation, I added health onto there, so after I lost my job the next day, I like totally called the dentist and my naturopath to get an appointment, and my gums are like totally trying to, they're inflamed and bleeding and gross, and it's worse when I'm stressed, so losing a job and not being able to find another job is stressful. Um, somebody had told me to go get a job at the Goodwill, and I was like, okay, and I was like, dang it, I'm supposed to be working as a doctor, and people keep saying, why did you waste your money to be a doctor if you can't work as a doctor, like, well, my funding fell through, so on January 1st, when I wanted to open my clinic, I wanted to open my clinic before January 1st and have it, so that when I got my license in the mail, boom, I'm in business, but it didn't work that way. So there's a place that's for rent, it would be 112 bucks a month, I was going to add 112 50 a month, which is 450 um, 100, sorry, I wish it was 100, 112 a week plus or minus, depending on how many weeks, you'd think, like, four weeks in a month plus a couple days. I'm, like, freaking the heck out because I was I had a bunch of home visits, and 
house calls, I mean, and all this stuff, and, um, well, what was that? It was, like, a wisp of something that was really weird. I end up not being able to be at that clinic, so now I am trying to go out on my own, and I'm terrified that I'm not going to be able to pay for the lease, and, um, it's like, I have, like, a, uh, line of credit that I, <clears throat> yeah, it would last me four months, it would last me, oh shoot, I did it wrong, I think it would last me less than four months, actually it would last me 4.44, the line on it months, if I didn't make a penny, so part of me was like, when my phone fell through the second time, now because I lost my job, which my job, my plan D or whatever was save up your money, save one to two hundred dollars a month if you possibly can, who cares, and get a tax return, keep working, um, and I'd been able to buy food and stuff and get a tax return, hopefully, and take that money and go sign a lease so that you have six months in the bank of rent at a place that's like three hundred, two, three, four hundred dollars a month. No more. Um, my relative told me to do six fifty nine, but I was like, Shh, because this person also said they were gonna pay my car payment and didn't and I sign I'm the one who signs it. I'm the one who's responsible. It's my credit. And I can't depend on someone else. If they sign it and say they wanna do it, that's their choice. So right now I'm just like my friend is like, oh, call another place, check another place out. I don't know. A few minutes ago, I felt in my heart, just find a law lawyer, a business, or some kind, like some kind of lawyer, and have them review any documents before you sign it. And that's what I was going to come up here and do, um, but I, I have to clean the entire house by tomorrow, and so it's like, you know this is coming, you know it's got to be done, da 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 just go ahead and, you know, finish doing the dishes, finish, you know, I put some pasta sauce on for the kids, I, I had tomatoes with cheese and garlic, and so that's my version of my raw food pasta, so cheese is cultured and not pasteurized, and I'm just like, I'm, I was so hungry earlier, me and my daughter are getting lost, trying to get in and out of Target. Oh my gosh, we drove around for so long. I'm like, I'm wasting gas. I was like, it doesn't matter. We got here safe. We got here. We just <laughs> it's like, it's like there's a mall here. And you can see the Target from the back, but there's a fence around it and cement wall and stuff, and you have to go back on the main road to get there. So the GPS was just like, you're there. And then we we got on the main road and went the wrong way, turned around, came back in the mall parking lot. And then went back out, and I'm like, oh, that's crazy. And we were like trying to drive weird while we were driving um, during rush hour, but it actually wasn't that bad. So I could say that at least. Um, it's actually not far from home. It's where I live is like completely crazy. If you don't have a sense of direction, it's it, this is like two miles from my house, and we were lost trying to get in and out. It's so many like circular roads and twisty windy roads and they'll, you'll swear that north is that way and if you look at a compass it's like completely the opposite direction and you're like seriously and you're like well I'm not it's got to be west but it's like to me southwest is that way but I don't, that doesn't I don't know it's weird because then when you get on the freeway it goes this way and you're like I know this is south I know this is north but then it twists even going towards the east side so I'm just like trying to calm down. I feel like I could sleep. I'm like, dude, if I sleep and they call me for a birth and I'm gone all day, you're gonna be like having to clean the whole house and tell your brother that this dude's coming and you're gonna have to be home by yourself. And I think that should be against the law, but they have a right because we don't own it. We have no rights and we're poor people living in public housing. So some reason because of poverty, we have even less rights because they're gonna do more knowing that we don't have to defend ourselves um, so what I'm going to do is go back to praying and charge my phone 
and I, um, nope, there's my timer. I'm gonna go ahead and change so that I can not feel like I'm messing up my kids' clothes. Um, this is cute. I wish I could wear stuff like this in the winter, like nice corduroy things that, but it's like, I gotta, like, I don't even, oh, I do have a coat. I was like, I don't even know where my coat is. I have, like, a Columbia one. I bought, I lost a bunch of weight a few years ago and had everything inside small, and then I gained weight and it got chunky, and then I was, like, losing after I lost my job, and now I'm, like, eating because I'm trying to tell myself, you can't think, you can't function, you can't clean if you're starving. So I was, like, eating, and then I was like, dang it, I gained weight again. I'm so mad. But you know what? gotta do because if you don't if you don't if you can't think and work and do your budget and earn income you're not gonna have any food or house or anything you're gonna be a whole lot more worried so I was trying to tell myself that so with that um I'm gonna just um work on my necklace just for a couple minutes and I'm gonna pray about what steps to take because it's it's a lot different when I I, I mean I did this and I was going to church at the time, but it wasn't anything to do with the church. Everyone at church said, there's no way you're going to medical school. Don't even try. Don't even take the prerequisites. You're too... So I'm like, you can't. almost at the time. My friends, who's smart but uneducated, I was like, dude, she should just go to... I had a couple of friends like that. Where said, it doesn't matter if you're educated or not, but they're just smart in general. And they read, like this lady called herself white trash and all this stuff. And I was like, uh-uh. She called her, she said her kids are retarded and so I'm like, nah, nah. I was like, you and your kids are smart, so you want to know, and you see her every time you go to her house, reading books from the library, also like, hey, we have a lot in common, I have a lot of friends like that, and it, they're smart enough not to get hundreds of thousand dollars in debt when they are going to go work, and they'll make more money than they ever without hundreds of thousand dollars in debt, like, actually, they're smarter, just because they have a degree doesn't mean anything. It's just that I wanted to use the gift that God gave me to help other people. And so that's where I'm, you know, that's where my focus was. But the church told me, absolutely do not. You don't even try to go to medical school. You're an idiot. And I went, and this lady told me, don't listen to them. And she's like, when I was taking my prereq, she goes, I hope you enrolled in college. And I was homeless. I was going to a free clinic for homeless acupuncture. And had to, I, the free clinic, you had to wait in line, sliding, uh, sliding scale, or the sliding scale, free clinic, whatever, um, you have priority because you're homeless, underinsured, because they changed it, that, the economy had gone bad around that time, so it, it was no longer just for homeless, underinsured, people with no money, even if you're working and have no money, which I've been working all these years, and for now, I work for myself, I just don't get paid yet, and one clinic, like, it wasn't for it was kind of like worse people get seen and the people of us that don't have as much going on don't get seen and I end up finding out that acupuncture you don't because I was going to both on acupuncture you can get an appointment it's like just come back next week and you can just walk, walk in and go down and wait in the waiting room so they have to wait for three or four hours to see if you're going to get in or not and be told sorry we're full so I I went to acupuncture and I was going to school and people were encouraging me and my friend was the one person in church that said everyone else said you're an idiot. She was like, I, I know you sign up for school, right? Like I was I thank her so much for being that one soul that believed in me. And right now I feel like everyone's against me. I volunteered for groups and people and volunteer to help their family and their house and stuff and help them if they ask for help and I asked for help one time and they ignored me and I was like yeah I keep saying I didn't help them for them to help me back but out of de like almost desperation I was like there's got to be something you could do to help me or call friends or you know offer some work or something and it's like not even response and I was just like screw this like so I'm like my friend reminded me that it's God's choice and God's guidance so when I, I didn't know but 
pass. I didn't know if it was for me. And I still remember these people saying, people like you don't belong in medical school. And I just wanted to say that now the school is over and people are reminding me, oh yeah, it's not so easy. Now you're starting out, you're just start you're starting out from scratch again. Because now it's time for you to start a business and you're not a business person. And other people are like, oh, it's, so, it's easy. I started a business before I went to medical school. Like, screw you. It's not like you're helping me, so shut up. So I'm like, right now I'm at the place where I'm like, like, dear Lord, please guide me what to do because I can't mess around. It's so competitive. And it's like, it is warfare that you read about in the Bible. And it's, um, it's, like, I was afraid the other day, like, why is everyone so stupid? Why is everyone so un, it's like cunning and baffling. Why are they so obvious about their evilness towards me? And my friend is back east. He's like, dude, I tell him, someone told me this, someone sent me this email, someone, he's like, people are so blunt to you, oh my god, like, I wouldn't put up with that garbage, and I was like, I don't want to put up with this garbage either, but as a black female, what am I going to do, stand up for myself in public, and be thrown in jail for standing up for myself, I was like, these fools are going to want to send the cops to shoot me, I'm not going to do, you know, I'm not going to say anything, and usually I'm so shocked, because I'm, I'm, I don't, I can't believe someone would, if I hadn't gotten somebody's face, started picking at them, and they came not themselves over I can understand why they have an attitude with me, but if I'm just like, I'm like kind of happy-go-lucky, oh yeah, I'm gonna do this, oh gee, like, me and my daughter will be at the store, and there'll be a whole bunch of clothes on the floor, and I'll be like, I'll be all like, oh my gosh, I gotta pick up these clothes off the floor of the grocery store, or of the department store, I'm like, I was like, oh my god, like, I used to do that because I, I don't want to run over this stuff with a car, and then you got this big black mark, and they shove it back on the shelf, and somebody says, oh, this is cute, and they don't look at the back, and they take it home, and then they're like, oh, dang it, there's a big tear in it, or some, you know, dust ball on it. I'm going to be the person that I just run over, and you're just like, you know, should have dusted off, put it back on there, it's like, nobody should have to pay full price, <laughs> but, and then now my kid is like, hold on, hold on, let me fix this, so, it's like, you'll see the full, the, sweatpants all compact and you're like hold on let me fold these up <laughs> like, people are gonna people are gonna come up to us and be excuse me babe can you help me find the dressing room it's like oh i'm sorry don't work here and it's like but i was like oh my gosh why do we have to be perfectionists like but it's 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 like what if that was my store you know and they're telling us that the department stores the grocery stores are going out of business and all this and I get jealous of people that own chain stores and all this, and I'm just like, dang, they, they close down. They lay people off, too. And someone was writing an article about finances. Being top five companies not to do a grocery store. You're like, oh, I do a grocery store. Like, well, don't do this, don't do this, because these chain stores are going to get in this. I've already thought, like, chain stores get everything cheap. And then they end up... They they do everything cheap and then they end up um, being able to barely get out or sold or go bankrupt or close down and turn into who knows what you know and especially the ones that aren't as chainy as the other ones the co-op they they will like totally like they they will totally like. They're like, oh, we, we pay our employees like $17 an hour minimum. I was like, dang, that's more than I got with my medical school degree. And like, I should apply for a job there. And I was like, I was like, dang it, is that why my prices went up? I need to build a bio like, from the co-op for like 20 bucks. And now it's like, you buy one thing and they're like 150 bucks. And you're like, I didn't even buy enough for one day. And I'm like, dang. So yeah, I'm going to get some specialty items that I can't get anywhere else. And I was like... Uh, then now I'm doing online shopping, and I'm I'm mad because I'm going to support them. Like, if you pay like a dollar or two or three or ten more than you can pay online shopping, then it's like support your local stores and your local farmers. But when it gets 
50, 60 dollars more, and then it's like, forget it. Like, I'll pay the postage. Like, forget it. And then they always offer free postage, so it doesn't matter anyway. But I feel like I, I tried so hard to support the local company, even if it was a few times a year, and now it's getting to be crazy. One store is I still shop at because of special items um, or as a treat for my hard work. I don't even shop there. They were nasty. They had a nasty attitude. I would shop there all the time if they didn't have a nasty attitude. So I'm going to go ahead and... <laughs> I lost this stupid letter. I asked for a refund for my membership fee because I'm desperately looking for money. And so I need... And the other one, I never... I only pay them like 40 bucks. So I'm, you know, I could ask for a refund. But that one actually gives me coupons and stuff. <clears throat> Which the other one, both of them... When I signed up, they were given dividends, or they were giving money back to, to patients, or to clients, or whatever you call us, and you could get it in a check or a form of store credit, I guess, but each co-op, when I joined like seven years ago, each co-op, when I joined, they had the dividends, so how much you spend, they'll give you a percentage based on how much profit they make, because it's a um, customer-owned store. And then they end up, they ended up, um, they ended up both when I joined the other one last year, saying, oh, I'm sorry, we don't make any money, we lost money, we remodeled this, we did that, we always do well, you can't get anything, here's a coupon, maybe, <laughs> like, the other one never even gave me a coupon. It's just like, if you spend 100 bucks, you, you save 10% or something, you're like, dude, I can go to Winco and get the same food, better quality, that's not going to rot in two days, and it's going to be like one-third the price, and I, I just had to be realistic. Like, most people in that store, it's not like they're doing their family grocery shopping. If they were nice and had better quality, I would shop there more, but most people there, it looks like, you know, wealthy young people that have condos. That go that go and to buy beer and wine, basically, and some chips. Cause they'll look at me like, "Why are you trying to get a whole cart full of food?" Like they'll look at me like I'm taking up the aisle, like getting a whole cart full of food because I want to get my kids, you know, local and organic, and some snacks and some fish and some of this and some frozen food and some vegetable. Like I, I wanted to, I wasn't trying to go and just buy party food and those people also they those are the type of people that belong to Costco because I can't afford Costco they can afford all that stuff and they will stock up on Costco food and then they'll be like snobby about how they shop regularly at their local co-op to buy a beer and wine and that is more like a status you know symbol so with that I'm gonna go I went down the <coughs> detergent aisle and my throat is closing up, and I have my kids pasta, so it's almost eight. I've done no cleaning since I got home. Haven't put the clothes in the dryer. I've got like a rash, and it's itchy. Um, I, my face is all up. I've been eating salt out of the container, which is weird for me. Um, oh, also I ate like cultured cheese in the bulk section in Winco, and I think that's also contributing to my fuzzy throat. But I feel more calm now, and I'm I'm gonna put my necklace for a few minutes. And ask God what to do between eight. I'm gonna let myself have me time for a minute between eight and ten. Just really getting up off my butt and make, making my kids their food and everything, and then go ahead and like pray about what to do with my own business and. I pretty much all but lost every, like, one of these time. I had library books, business, and some more home-based business, some more um, just bit small business, some are specific to my uh, city, I think, um, locally written, some are, two of them are for business women, uh, actually three, I have three now. It had a lot to do with, you know, having kids in the house and 
uh, not one of them that was like a Christian and some young kids in the house and they'd sign on the door saying at work and trying to set back and because my kids are <clears throat> they're older but they're in the house because of web school and they need a lot of rides to school in random days and times that I'm trying to work. We got a we splurge calendar and my little kid actually he needs a calendar and I got a big we had the Fly Ladies calendar, so we tried to. She loved that calendar, and I hear this before I bought the calendar. You see the comments, "Oh my kids love the calendar. You can write what you're gonna be, and they can look at it." And now I was like, "That's stupid," because I'm like, "Can't they just listen?" But they're listening at seven in the morning. They're not listening. It's like, "Oh, I'm going there, and then I'm going here, and I'll be home at twelve, and I have to go back out at two. Like, mm mm. So that if I can write, even though I have my own planner, I can write it on there or write down like, hey, you have a test this day, you need to leave at this time, make sure your clothes are ready the night before. Like, so it's a huge calendar that is on the fridge. Not on the fridge. We put it on the fridge and it's actually and the bathroom and she we didn't get one last year and I just been using this calendar my dad gave me that's like this. You have to like use a magnifying glass. I tried to put the stickers on there. Like, Birthday. I was like, oh, it's not working. <laughs> like, so I finally, I splurged. I said, well, this lost my money. Our calendar and all three of us have a messed up schedule. It is like we can't mess stuff. And when you coordinate rides or figure out bus, all that stuff. Like, if you're gonna ride the bus, how soon you have to leave? Make sure you have money. Make sure you have this. Make sure. You have like, I was mad because she wanted to go to school without a wallet and a phone. I was like, dude, no, you have to. I like, drove. I was on the freeway. I turned around and came home. Like, oh, yeah, though, we didn't we need to have our thing. Never. We needed our ID. So I need, they should make sure to say that next time. But, um, because I was like, you can't be left somewhere without a phone and a wallet and an ID and bus fare. And she was just like, I don't have any pockets. I don't have a coat with a zipper. And I, I was like, I don't care. <laughs> like, can you carry a purse? No. She refused to carry a purse or a backpack. So I'm just like, it's kind of nice to have your purse and your backpack and your water bottle and your snack just in case. Um, so that's where I am right now. Um, it's going to cost me money to open my business. All the business stuff is paid for. The website's paid for for the time being. The only thing I'm missing is I ordered a chip card reader, card chip reader, and it never came. I need to go with that tomorrow. I don't know if they charged me. I ordered it in like July. So I had to do that uh, from the square. And so for right now, I just want to say that it's a new territory. When I went to medical school, it was a new territory. When I went to do my prereqs after repeating like two or three years of pay, which was again, and borrowing money this time, so that my parents pay, it was like insulting. So. It was just like, what the heck am I doing? I'm never going to do it. I'm, like, why? What is my goal? Okay, I'm going to be a businesswoman. I'm going to be an entrepreneur. The old pastor would be like, no, you're not. You're going to go, and you're going to have this difficult schedule, just like my brother-in-law, and you're going to have to work in some facility, and they're going to tell you when to work, and when you can have off, and when you can't, and what you're out. And I was like, no, I'm not. I'm going to go get a store, and I'm going to have an open sign, and I'm going to say, this is my... Um, this is my, you know, clinic, and I'm going to set the hours, and if I want to close down for a month so I can go to Bermuda, then I'm going to go, you know, if I want to go do a mission trip in Tanzania and Zimbabwe, then I'm going to go, you know, if I want to, you know, adopt a kid or go marry some Spanish guy or something, I don't know, and have a honeymoon this week, I'm going to go, if I want to my butt off seven days a week, then I'm going to go. If my kids want to come and work for me, then they're going to come work and I'll get a tax number for them or, you know, pay their whatever taxes and health care. Um, I don't think you have to do health care. They already have health care, but yeah, that's where I am right now. And I'm still remembering all this old stuff. I'm still remembering because I was trying to go to all these business groups and this guy was a business owner, entrepreneur. And he kept telling me that I'm not going to be, first of all, I told him I'm never going to be a doctor. And then I said, I'm not going to be an entrepreneur. Like, yes, I am. So I still have this. It's like you have a room full of drawers, like the old uh, wooden and metal card catalogs. If people know, it's an old library. Thing. 
pull out. And then you do and look at it. It's like, I want a book about astronomy. I want this one written by this author. And then you have the card. I don't know if you pulled the card out or not. I think you could. I don't remember. And then you write down the number, which used to be Dewey Decibel. Not, they don't use Dewey Decibel out here anymore. But it used to be, I, we had to memorize the Dewey Decibel system when I was a little tiny kid. That's the good old days. Um, go get the book. But some reason it's like, my life feels like a room full of these nice, nice wood color, wood, real wooden light. Or whatever they had on the little cards that stuck into the you know the metal plate name plate thing, and you go in and you have my brain and my goals and my plans A through Z, and you have. What needs to be done? Children, this and that. Be great, grateful because people's kids die, and people die, and their parents die, their friends die, their house burns down, their car gets destroyed. Like stuff happens. You want things to be safe. Your spiritual world. And then you're like, plan. Be a doctor. Plan. Be a business owner. Plan. Be successful. I'm not just anyone. Plan. Follow the rules. Pay my taxes. And it's like so many. You're a doctor. You're not an entrepreneur. And it's like that drawer. Of goodies, I had, a, I had a lock on it and a key, and it's like that person. It's like a kid, you know, stealing your lunch money or something. And you're like, you can't catch me, you can't catch me, and and they, you know, or they throw your lunch money into the bushes, and you gotta go dig for it. Like, dang it, lunch is almost over. I don't have enough money to get my tray of food. It's almost like mentally, if this person says something to me, that makes me doubt myself. And they're supposed to be leaders or parents or spiritual leaders or, you know, people that can say, hey, if that's what's in your heart, that's what God's leading you on this path, then you go ahead and follow that. But it's almost like they ha they take it and they walk it and they throw the keys. And it's like, my doctor thing, my entrepreneur thing, my, I'm going to be clean and successful and loving and honest. It's like it gets locked. And it's partly how I react, but it's almost like like a real blood. And it's like you either get in the bushes and you dig and you say, I'll show them, and you find it and you let your dreams come alive again. You know, you reach for the moon, you reach for the stars, and you block them. Like, there, you have a security guard now, that person's not allowed in your dreams, in your goals, in your future, in your present even. And it's like, it's almost like so, it, it makes my heart physically, I feel stuff in my heart when I think of this stuff, feeling blocked and all this. And then there's this thing where it's like, dang it, it's like they flush the key down the toilet. And it's like, I'm getting a chisel, I'm getting some, you know, tools, I'm getting some scissors, I'm getting some bobby pins, and I'm going to bust in, and I'm going to have to call and pay at somebody who wants to come do it song cut that thing away it's, it's getting to be where it's like if you really want to follow your dream this person screwed with your with your ability to move forward when there's enough troubles trying to do the right thing even with support there's enough troubles trying like if you're trying to buy a house or you're trying to get someone's opinion on should I buy this retail shop or should I buy this condo for my business or should I lease this office space or should I, or should I open up a food restaurant, you know, or should I just sell everything and move to Las Vegas and open up a, you know, gambling and some on a weird behavior thing, or church, whatever, and it's just like hard enough to try to follow what your goals are and follow the fine print that the government tells you how to do and fill out the right paperwork, but when you have people blocking you, messing with you. I think that's human nature. You think they're friends. It's friend or foe. It's like someone you think is a friend. And wolf and sheep. And my problem with memorizing things is like, dang, it's 
it's like a mental block and I had to chisel through there and it's like chip away at it and I have to do, we did it once, I had a lot of Native Americans, you know, a white woman who was married to a black guy and there's like a lot of inter different people, different spiritualities, mostly Christian based, but we did a ceremony on New Year's Eve or New Year's Day where we all wrote something down and I wrote down, the pastor told me I would never be a doctor and it was, she's like something that's blocked wrote down that I'd never be a doctor. She, this lady also encouraged me to go to school, get an education, get a good job, lead, you know, take care of your kids. And she put this, everyone's, I think there was 10 or 11, 12 houses, she put everyone's in a crate. And we burned them. We burned them to ashes. And did a release ceremony. And I had a friend from church who was one of the positive people in my life I was celebrating my life. She said she had to fill a jar with the stuff that was bugging her and just eventually she put it, she was a smoker too, she wasn't afraid of fire in the house like I was, but she would just put it in their sink, kitchen sink, and burn it up and flush it down the drain. And sometimes you don't have to do that. You can mentally do that, but sometimes, like even that whole process of thinking about that, that we had a ceremony together, and that was the block for me in 2006. That was a block because of one sentence somebody said to me. I didn't call and have kind of an argument, and it's just like they want to, you know, they they have little kid toys where you beat, beat the wooden nail into the little thing and it's just like kind of stuck in there like shoot <laughs> like how do you get that out of a wooden, wooden hammer to grab it out but it's like it's just like they're beating me down into the ground every time I try to defend myself it's like they beat me down and I'm like maybe they're right they have a better car they have a better house they have a better hairstyle than I do they get what they want their kid gets picked to the team their kid gets goes to homecoming and prom with a date it's like we never have that kind of thing we're you know we're a black family we're poor we're homeless like they're right it's for people like them to do successful things and be entrepreneurial for people like us not able to buy clothes like no I have like that is their privileged society that they live in and I have to do like whoosh, straight to God what does God want me to do and those people are not in my life anymore so I, I have to mentally and or physically chisel away at not allowing that to block me and I'll feel sorry. I'll be like, oh my God, what if I make more money than them? What if I could send my kids to school for cash and buy a house for cash? Like, I'll feel like, oh no, I can't be better than them. I don't deserve it. Like, if I make that much money, I'm just going to write them a check. Like, my mind will be so warped. Like, no, they didn't give you nothing. Like, they didn't give you anything. You need loans. Like, don't even, like, dream. Your loans are so big that if you could pay them off in 10 years, it would definitely be a miracle. I could pay him off in 25 years, it would definitely be a miracle. If I could pay him off in 30 years, it would be dope. So, right now, that's that's where I am. So I'm gonna go um, and get some stuff done. I could get called to a birth anytime between now and, you know, forever. Everyone keeps saying, you hate being on call, you don't have time to do it. This is gonna be your future. And I'm like, dude, do you realize that when I actually work as a birth worker, I'll get paid and I won't be sitting here crunching numbers on my calculator all day. There's a difference there. And yeah, and people say, yeah, that's still going to be hard. You're going to have people audit your charts. You're going to have, you know, the insurance paperwork to do. You're going to make sure you're coding. If someone's insurance, so you have to deal with that and have, you know, and you're going to have to pay your taxes and then you're going to have to do this and make, you know, stock up on goods. Like, now they're telling me, don't buy anything for your clinic. It's too expensive. And they're like, well, we buy it, but we buy it together. And I'm just like, are they telling me to buy it from them? <laughs> or it's like, you know, I, I heard I heard a lot of stuff. I heard a lot of stuff that most people don't hear. And I liked that. I'm glad I remember stuff. They'll be like, you have a kid you vaccine. In your refrigerator. You can go into the... I hear you can go to the drugstore and order a single vaccine. Well, my doctor told me that. 
I want to detap or t tap, t tap, I mean, <laughs> detap, uh, detap, t tap, and yeah, t t tap, and she's like, oh, I think I can get it for you. I can go to the drugstore and order it. She didn't really know. I just got it at the the allopathic place, but I was like, I was like, okay. So I should do that. That's what I was gonna say. In the beginning of the year, I was going to open a clinic, and then I was going in with somebody else because my funding fell through. That fell apart. Totally screwed me up for, like, months. I oh, swear, like, six months. So now I'm going back to my own thing again, having to undo everything. So I'm going to make an Excel spreadsheet who to tell when my address changes to actually have a physical clinic. And let them know I still have a mailing address at home, but I also have a physical address. They figure that out, and then... do lists or some items that I want. I bought most of the items when I was working and I was trying to work a little bit extra hours. I was paying all the money back to the school to take midwifery classes but I'd take a little bit here and there and buy a couple things on sale for doctors because I could like you know disposable pap kits and stuff. And point, you lab thing to this one lab they sent me hundreds of dollars worth of equipment like some of the stuff is expiring already and like that was a waste but uh, my mind is like get back on the ball you need to move forward like you need to your primary care you don't know who's going to come in if you go to the hospital I'm like oh sorry we don't have any thermometer sorry we can't take your blood pressure sorry we we don't have any alcohol wipes we're not going to draw your blood like when do you ever do that no they always have it like the only thing they don't have maybe is certain vaccines they run out of so that's what I'm, I'm going to check into that. I figured out how to do the compounding pharmacy and all this stuff. So I think for the time being, just you can make phone calls and make a spreadsheet and say, okay, this company, you call this place, you call this place, you call this place. So um, <clears throat> that's where I am right now. I'm going to go check out my kids' food. But it's a scary thing, but I think I don't have the next three to six which I find unlikely. I thought that but since January 1st, too, that it would be unlikely that I wouldn't have one patient. But it so happens, I think getting myself organized, getting my paperwork organized, and then finishing my midwifery program, which is another reason I was going to wait till after April and May, because I'm like, I'll be almost done. I was telling myself, just get this stuff organized. Read the fine print. Really know what you're getting to when you're going to do your billing out and go ahead and get the deadline, organize the money for my license, make sure I do my CE credit classes, and then while you're waiting for patients and advertising these books on the shelf that are not selling online, just go go through them and take notes and get that stuff back in my mind because it's been over a year since I was a student for just naturopathic. But yeah, for primary care, you have to be ready for anything and you have to be able to like, they were like, oh, yeah, I haven't had a pap in 10 years. Boom, I can do it right now. And I want to be able to do that. So I, I set myself up for that, and I just dwindled out. And now I'm trying to tell myself, go ahead and do it again. But, yeah, right now we have an inspection, so I'm going to clean up the dishes, clean the front area, and do some vacuuming, my daughter some snacks. Um, I may not make another video. I really wanted to work on this, but I talked for an extra 15 minutes. So I think I'm going to do a few dishes and come back to that and then um, charge my phone and then read some of my book. Sorry, I don't know if I should have...